going to share with you guys all the things that you should know about solo traveling in China. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another video from Ling Ling. Today we are going to talk about a few tips when you are solo traveling in China. A few days ago I was watching another big YouTuber talking about the tips for solo traveling around the world. So I thought, hmm, why not make a video about this topic but a China edition? Because that's my favorite topic, of course, you guys know. I've been traveling a lot around China and I almost always travel on my own. So I feel like now it's time for me to share all the tips with you guys. I hope it's useful and without further ado, let's get started. Doo -doo. Number one, in the video I was watching the girl talk about the feeling of loneliness when you're on the road on your own. This also applied to China. But she suggested you should go to hostels if you felt lonely because you will always find new friends there. Because this is a China edition, so I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about the hostels in China. Hostels is a new thing and they're popping up everywhere around China, which is amazing. The quality of the hostels are great. The Chinese standards are pretty high when it comes to hostels. So that's an awesome thing. But if you're traveling outside of Beijing and Shanghai, the big city, then it's very common that the hostels are very quiet or if there are other Chinese travelers around they seem to like to play on their phone or their English is not good enough so they are shy to talk to you if you want to make friends in a Chinese hostel it's a really good idea to practice a few Chinese words or speak very slowly or just go and talk to people because they're shy because of the language barrier so don't worry about it if you feel lonely just go for it Chinese people are extremely welcoming and friendly Friendly, but you have to take the first step. Number two is problem solving. So when you're traveling on your own, it's only you. If you have a problem, it's only you who can fix it or who has to figure out how to fix it or how to find people who can help you fix it, right? So you learn a lot about how to solve problems on your own. You also learn a lot about yourself, which I think personally is amazing. Every time I bump into a situation that's not great that where there is a problem then I'll have to think and then because I think and because I try to fix the problem on my own I learn a lot about myself how I react in certain certain situations and it's also easier for me now to stop myself from reacting in a certain kind of way that's not good for the situation I don't know was that confusing sorry <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so when you're traveling solo in China, you will of course bump into problems. Remember just to take a deep breath. And if you have questions, ask around you. Again, if they don't understand your English, remember to learn a few Chinese words beforehand. I always suggest people to check out Chinese Pod, which I have a link to below in my description box as well. I use it all the time on the go. So I practice Chinese on the go, even though I'm not in China or if I am in China, it's just a, a really great app, both for your phone and online. There's a website as well where you can practice. You can check out the disc discount code below. You can just try it out if you feel like it and you can learn a little bit before you're going to China to travel on your own or study on your own or work on your own. It's just a it's a good thing. Number three, when you're traveling solo and you're lost somewhere, you will usually turn to Google Maps, right? <laughs> if I know you right. In China, that's not possible. Yeah, sorry guys, but Google is blocked in China. You might be able to, I don't know if it has like, Google Map has like an offline app or something. I'm not sure about that. But I just want to suggest you to, before you're going to China, to download an offline map make sure that that one is not blocked in China and then you can use it everywhere. If you're studying Chinese and you would like to learn more Chinese on the go, you can also download Baidu map, which I am using all the time. Baidu is basically the equivalent to Google in the West. So Baidu is super awesome and you can practice Chinese on the go. How cool is that? 
It's a challenge, but you're definitely going to get better uh, speaking Chinese. Number four. So, in China, every time you're logging onto Wi-Fi, which they have everywhere, you always need to put in a phone number so you can receive a code and then write it down and then click and you're on Wi-Fi. But if you don't have a SIM card while you're traveling around China, you will not be able to get online in many places. So I will suggest you to buy a SIM card immediately when you get to China. One thing guys, when you're arriving in the airport, don't buy a SIM card in the airport because it's usually super overpriced. Wait until you get to the first city and then ask a Chinese friend or ask someone in the hostel if they can help you. Uh, go and buy a sim card when you're going to buy a sim card always bring your passport because they need that to sign it up and stuff yeah number five if you guys haven't heard this before then the chinese internet is blocking basically all foreign websites so if you want to get into contact with friends and family both inside and outside of china it's a really good idea to download a vpn beforehand recently the chinese government have block a lot or like close down a lot of they call it illegal vpns which is kind of weird because vpns in general are illegal like in china but yeah they call them illegal vpns those are the free vpns so you can try to download one of the free ones but if you want to make sure that it's not going to close down then it's a good idea to purchase one to buy one i always use express vpn you can see a link below in the description box as well you can check that one out but that's totally up to you just saying that i use the express vpn i'm very happy about that number six when you're traveling solo and you don't speak the language and you get lost somewhere it's really important that you bring around your Chinese address so if you're at a hostel that's called sunshine hotel or sunshine hostel then it's usually not the same name in Chinese and if you're going for a taxi the cab driver he will definitely not know also if you have the address in English written down he will also not know a lot of Chinese people who didn't go to university cannot read the pinyin the letters they need to see the characters also because one pinyin like one sound like shi s h i can mean so many different things it always depends on the character so guys remember to bring around your chinese address so you can always find your way back no matter where you go number seven when you're traveling on your own and you want to go to a specific place but it's really complicated because you want to you have to take the bus somewhere and change and change and change and it's all in Chinese and there's no help to find anywhere I would suggest you to go for a group tour the foreign group tours are usually more pricey than the Chinese one but on the Chinese one they only speak Chinese so again if you want to practice your Chinese or if you want to save money just like I always want to <laughs> I would choose a Chinese group tour if you want to meet new foreign friends and understand what is going on on the tour then you should go for the group tour for foreigners number eight traveling all alone and not being able to speak the language or maybe you know a little bit it's always a good idea to find a Chinese friend maybe you have a Chinese friend at home before you're going to China maybe you find a Chinese friend in China it doesn't really matter but it's a really good idea to have a contact person if you bump into some problems that you just cannot solve on your own number nine I suggest you to download WeChat WeChat is a great app to use for chatting and everything else really in China WeChat is life in China so the friend that you found on my tip number eight Eight, you can add that friend on your WeChat tip number nine and then you can always get into contact with them no matter if the VPN is working or not this is a really good thing to have as like a backup plan if everything else goes wrong I haven't had problems like that before but I also traveled mostly when I was able to speak the language so yeah it's a really good idea to have a Chinese friend on your WeChat. Number 10, when you're solo traveling in China, you're gonna be 
on your own and Chinese people are really a fan of foreigners and a lot of Chinese tourists if you meet them at sightseeing spots you're gonna be really excited about seeing a foreigner because a lot of them have never seen one in real life before so you might bump into people who says hello or like they pass you and then they say hello <laughs> sometimes I say hi sometimes I don't react it's very much according to my mood also it's very common that Chinese tourists who want to take a picture with the foreigner so if you don't mind it just say yes you smile just stand there but the problem is because there are a lot of Chinese tourists if you're traveling during high season or in very touristy areas it's a good idea to get used to saying no okay so you can say yes but then at some point you could be like okay it's enough now I need to go bye 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 you know it's okay they usually respect that they do they do respect that but just saying when you're solo traveling in China you might bump into this situation especially if you're traveling outside of the big cities Shanghai Beijing Xi'an like these very foreign touristy places if you go further up north or west or south or wherever you want to go wherever you're going this might happen so don't worry about it if you really don't like it just say no it's okay <laughs> there you have it 10 things you should know about solo traveling in China I hope that you like my tips and tricks here if you have more things that people should know please write them in the comments below we can share we can talk chit chat also please give me a thumbs up for this video and remember if you need any advice on china you can check out my website lena around for more information about my skype ling ling project yes i'm looking forward to hear from you also check out my patreon if you feel like supporting lena around and have a nice day evening wherever you are in the world guys Thank you for watching and I'll see you again very very soon. Ling Ling Sam, see ya and Tai Chen. Bye bye.